The defending Premiers continue to search for that elusive first win of the season, while the home side is looking to fight back from a surprise loss to Joondal up last week. That's the scenario we have this week as we launch into round five of the Fortescue Premier Grade competition. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stan Sports' coverage of this Cottesloe West Scarborough clash from Harvey Field. My name is Dwayne Nestor, and joining me in commentary this afternoon is former Springbok and Western Force star Peter Grant. And we're at one of the most picturesque grounds in Australia and at its best this afternoon. And where else would you want to be on a perfect Saturday hour, though, Pete? No, nowhere, Dwayne. It's absolute perla down here today, as you said. Um, sun's shining, warm, nice, uh, warm 30 degrees down here. I think both teams will be pretty happy with these conditions. You know, it's a uh, the, the tended uh, Fremantle doctor can come up here and get pretty nasty here in the afternoons. But uh, no, today there's absolutely no excuses. It's a... Uh, it's fair for both teams, so I look forward to a crack afternoon. And it's probably just a little bit of a slight breeze there from right to left of the screen, Pete, which will, do you think that sort of breeze would have any impact on the kicking game of either team? Oh, like I mentioned, it's, uh, you, you, but teams will take that, absolutely. As I say, it can get pretty strong out here, being you know, right on the edge of the coast. Um, so, no, I think very little impact, especially I think both teams want to, want to play with the ball in hand and uh, especially West as you said looking for that uh, that first win of the season so uh, yeah I think if, if, if anything if um, if the teams win the toss I think that they'd, they'd take that breeze at their back just to just to get off to a good start and uh, West Scarborough you mentioned there they haven't uh, had a win as yet a rude awakening for coaching for Jeremy Thrush <laughs> what, what, what do you think he'd be yeah. trying to do with the team uh, you know looking for that win Oh, look, I mean, you've got to be... Uh, he's had a tough start, hasn't he? There's some really tough uh, tough opponents first up. Um, but uh, uh, back to basics, I think, is, is pretty, um, you know, the, the obvious uh, route, I think, just to try and stick, to, uh, simplify the game, um, get down to basics, as I said, and uh, and just make sure you've got the, uh, the simple things right. You're doing the simple things right, which comes down to set piece, your scrums, your lineouts. And uh, and like I said, they'll be keeping the ball in hand, trying to trying to hold the ball and, and, and work through their phases. Um, I mean, there's not much more they can do than that. And you, you mentioned their set piece, and their line out has been hit and miss thus far this year. So just trying to get that uh, consistent. As we look at the teams, and we'll run through them this afternoon uh, for West Scarborough, the visitors in the front row: Eden Beach, Ford Hemi, and Kurt Tia, the locks. Ashley Vivers, Regan Leslie, two newcomers to Perth. In the back row, it's Billy Brown, Jacob Norris and uh, Isaac Mio. The uh, 9 and 10 combination, Henry Robertson, Ollie Ashley-Jones. In uh, centres, Louis David and Josh Tinamana. And on the wings, Jonah Placid, who I believe will be wearing jersey 15 and uh, Will Corder in 14. And Cody Tapini-Grace will be wearing jersey 11, but he will be playing from fullback, as I understand it. For Cottesloe this afternoon, we've got Charlie Hancock and Shane Faulkner. Um, rounding up the front three is um, Mariko Fagasa Nuku. Um, ben Stirrett, Missy Komai in the, in the second rowers. Um, in the back row, we've got Phil Sawalu, Jarai Mua, and Ethan Kalis captaining there for us this afternoon. And uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the halves, we've got Phoenix Hunt and Ben, ben Meredith, which is going to be a, a good combination to watch this afternoon. Um, on the wings, on the wings, Jordan uh, Williams and uh, Shai Wipiri, um, Gio Leituala, and in the centres is an exciting man to watch. Um, with him is a. Uh Korea Bucky, and at the back we've got Ethan Robinson. And uh, just a special mention to Kyle Burnett, who is the referee for this afternoon as the referees make their way down towards the field. It's his 150th game, and uh, which is, I, I had a comment uh, by a fellow referee yesterday saying 150 is pretty good because usually by then they've got sick of being abused and they uh, and they uh, retire from the game. <laughs> but we say that very facetiously. Though the referees are a very important part of this game, and they're essential actually, uh, and we congratulate Congratulate Kyle for uh, sticking it out and doing a good job for those 150 games. So hopefully his 150th is his best and uh, we look forward to a good game. And, and as you said, uh, Bash, there's there's no excuses this afternoon from either team. Yeah, no, nothing. I mean, just to touch on Kyle there, what a fantastic milestone he's achieved there. And uh, yeah, as you said, it's, 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 the, the weather's played ball for him for his 150th. 
and yeah, as they come out here this afternoon, the uh, West is going to lead lead the lead the team out. And um, yeah, there's there's really no, no excuses. We look forward to a, a good game of rugby. I'm excited. We're in the prime seats here, uh, Dwayne. We've got um, good front row seats, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to a good game. And uh, enjoy, enjoy, definitely enjoying the sunshine because this can be a horrendous place oh, gone, when yeah. the weather is poor. Uh, but it's also <laughs> one of the most picturesque and beautiful pieces of real estate, rugby real estate in Australia, no doubt. Uh, looking out over the ocean, which unfortunately you can't see from the camera angles because we have it to our backs. Uh, but uh, in all in all, uh, a fantastic afternoon as West Scarborough have made their way onto the field and. The motivation for them is desperation, would you say, Pete, just to get a win on the board? Yeah, look, I mean, you can't avoid it, can you? I mean, Jeremy Thrush off to kick-starting his uh, campaign last year with, 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 the, with a victory, you know, uh, in the champions, defending champs. So um, oh, there's a lot riding on this, isn't there? I mean, there's a lot of pressure. The pressure's starting to build. Um, guys are starting to feel the pressure, and that's when the mistakes start coming in. And, uh, yeah, we, we were, there's, there's Thrushy. He's got a big smile on his face there this afternoon. So, he, I mean, he's excited. He's, he loves getting down here. And so, um, yeah, let's, let's hope they, they can just um, soak it up. And the motivation for Cottesloe after a shock loss to Joondalup last week, uh, their motivation? Yeah, I think back at home. Uh, you know, they've got a good good um, good uh, record here at home. And, uh, yeah, I think a little, little slip up there last week. Uh, I mean, take nothing away from Joondalup. You know, they, they, they're a really competitive team and, and, and took them all the way there last week. So, um yeah, they'll, they'll be looking to get back to winning ways for sure. No worries. As we look forward to Gio Liatuala picking up the ball on the halfway, ready to restart, and uh, Cole Burnett making his way to the middle. So we are ready for a kickoff in this round five clash, and it's going to be a big one. I would suggest this will be a close game, irrespective of the fact that Cottesloe is sitting second on the ladder and West Scarborough on the bottom. So Gia Liatuala looking to restart and the whistle from Cole Burnett and away we go. And it's a good kick into that air. That's Jonah Placid from the wing taking that clean ball and carrying forward. And uh, West Scarborough looking to exit on the box kick. Great exit there from Robertson. He's hit that beautifully off the boot. And a, and a good take there. Shywood Peary taking that. And Cottesloe with the ball in the hand early and looking to play the kicking game as West Garbra bring it back and put it back on the boot. So early on, nobody wants to run with the ball. They just want to play field position. That's Max Bury from West Garbra putting that ball deep into the Cottesloe 22. And that, that's a great exit from uh, Cottesloe, relieving the pressure there. Great left foot exit there from Ethan Robertson. He's uh, found found touch just the other side of the halfway line. And, um, yeah, it's just putting West Cobra back on, on the back foot and letting them work, work work their way back in. And it's just a uh, almost like a sounding out period here, isn't it? It's just sort of <laughs> testing the water, seeing what each team's going to do. As we go to the line out, one successfully by West Scarborough. And they carry it forward through Mio. And that's his job for West Scarborough, just carry hard. Oh, isn't it scary watching Mio with ball in, in hand there at full flight? And Leslie being hit hard there in that carry, going to the edge of the field. And that's Tapini Grace coming in from fullback. Pressure on at the breakdown there. And uh, Cole Burnett being forced to make a decision. And he goes West Garbra's way. So penalty advantage. So they play back through the middle. That's Leslie again making another carry. The first penalty of the match going to West Garbra. And uh, coming from a little bit of enthusiasm from the Cottesloe breakdown. Good combination to watch this um, with uh, Henry Robertson and we've got uh, Max Burry at uh, 10 for West Garbra. Um, both very uh, exciting youngsters to watch and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how, how they, they work together today. And Max's story coming from north in Sydney, obviously a uh, Simon Cron protege. He's brought him over to train with the force and he's uh, got an opportunity to play here in Perth. So hopefully enjoys the not only the rugby but the, the, the city itself. Let's go to the line out. What's not 20. to love with Perth, hey? <laughs> <laughs> Ford Hemi hitting Jacob Norris there in the line out and they drive forward West Scarborough. They've got a good platform here to play off and Cotter's like peeling around the side there. They better be careful of that. That's Ben Sterrett just pushing the boundaries of the offside line there. But West Scarborough continuing to rumble their way forward. And another penalty. So the penalty advantage there. So West Scarborough have got a uh, little bit to play with here. Play through the mid through Louis David, David Louis. Sorry, he's uh, 
That's uh, his role as well, is to get go forward through the midfield. Go back for the penalty. And, uh, after two successful line-outs, uh, there's no doubt they'll kick to the corner here, Pete. Yeah, absolutely. Pressure's, pressure's building here now um, against Cottesloe. And, uh, yeah, I love that. Just uh, touching on Louis David's run there, good uh, centre combination there. They've been playing together for a long time there with Louis David and... Uh, Tunamana, they're the captain, and uh, yeah, so they'll, they'll be pretty good to watch there in the midfield as well. Solid performers. So Cottesloe's defence under pressure here, and uh, another line-out win. Norris goes up again. And not a great lift, but they managed to get the ball and set up that maul again. And they're staying nice and tight, controlling it from the back, and uh, that looks well, like they're going over there. And that will yeah. have to be a try there. Kyle's in the great position, so it's try mm -hmm. time for Scarborough. And, and it's a great try, and they'd set that up, and they'd shown that they were willing to do the mauling, and uh, they've done really well there. And uh, by the looks of that, that's Ford Hemi who has scored. He snuck himself another try. And a good control as we go here. And, and once again, not the greatest lift, but uh, still, you know, it's the result that uh, probably matters the most. So, Good chat there by Norris in the middle. I think he's really coordinating things there. And you're right, I think it's him. He just sneaks in at the back. And they just broke off, and there was no, there's no real defence there from Cottesloe on the edge, was there? They'd committed no. to the, uh, the rolling mall and trying to defend that. But when the, when the uh, West Scarborough uh, almost mini mall had been able to break away, there was nothing there to stop. And it was an easy five points there for West Scarborough. And they take a lead, and it's been a good start for them, especially around their line-out. And as we said prior to the game, that their line-out had struggled a little bit, a bit inconsistent, but certainly not today. Uh, a very good start by their set-piece. Yeah, I watched the game a couple of weeks ago against Netherlands, down at Netherlands, and they struggled with their line out. And that, that, that's what I was talking about in the beginning there with that uh, simplicity, basics, you know, set piece. And, uh, and that's, what's got, that's what's got them into play, set piece, and um, put them in a great position, and uh, they come away with points. And uh, that unsuccessful conversion there by Tapini Grace slipped it to the left of the posts. So the, f the try, five points. And as we see that... Uh, that John Owen won't again. be happy with his forwards there. He's going to have to have a chat with them at half-time. That's if he remembers that far. <laughs> as the uh, restart is down. a long one. To the mire. And, uh, and there it is. Look at that. He gives <laughs> it to his big centre, centre, centre pairing there. And David and Robertson looks like he's going to settle back for another box kick here. And um, yeah, after that last one, why wouldn't you? He's hitting them beautifully. It is a big box kick. He's gone long. He's gone from ground here, and it's uh, well set. Robinson at the back there hits Kalis. Kalis carries it forward, runs into a good tackle by Tina Mana, and uh, now Cottesloe in attack around halfway. Kamai carries it forward for Cottesloe. A little bit messy at the back of the breakdown, and And uh, confusing yeah. for everybody watching there is Cobb, and it put his arm out for advantage to West Scarborough, and everyone was wondering why. But uh, the infringement for going off their feet, West Scarborough, so that is a penalty to Cottesloe. Cottesloe well, looking a little bit, um, you know, at all sorts there. They're not quite sure knowing which, which way they're going there. A little bit of direction needed there. I think Ben Meredith needs to step up and, uh, and just guide them around a bit more. And, and that's, a, that's a key uh, attribute of a, a good 10, isn't it, Pete? Uh, obviously something you were very good at is just controlling the game, being level-headed. Well, that's right. And, and the forwards, you know, they, 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 they like, they like the, they're tied. You know, they stuck their head out of the scrum or line off more. And so they, they just need a bit of guidance at times. And as, as I say, it's just a, just a loud mouth there, really. Just um, giving them a bit of direction and, uh, and it definitely helps them. And a bit of pressure there from West Scarborough has uh, upset the apple cart for the Cottesloe's line-out. So West Scarborough getting the scrum feed from that knock-on from the line-out. So, yeah, a little bit of pressure being applied here early on by West Scarborough, not only on the scoreboard but in set piece. And we'll see how this scrum goes. And uh, we shout out to uh, Mickey Collis and uh, Heath Tessman. We will miss Tess's... Uh, breakdown of uh, each of the scrums that we see today so we might just let them happen and uh and uh, yeah i don't know if we're going to be able to dissect these so well hey uh, uh, not really we, we could always, <laughs> we could always make something up bash and yeah, uh, as, as most backs do when the they're watching a game that's right yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we see what uh, west scarborough look to do here whether they actually look to play with the ball a little bit or just want to continue to find uh territory through the kicking game good scrum there by scarborough and it looks like a territory game as they put that high up into there. And it's Shea Wapiri back there. Takes it safely. 
And a pressure oh, pass to pressure Robinson, passes. and he's done very well. And done another offline. Kuribaki carries it forward, and he's a Good big kick. unit too. And a little bit of insecurity at the ball, but it goes backwards, and it's picked up by Mua there. Hunt hitting Meredith. He's punted that long, and uh, is that going to be is too long? We're going to be set Bounce. up. And, uh, just waiting oh, to see what happens. Work. So that has gone dead. A little bit of the breeze. That's coming the breeze. Into play that's there. right. Yeah, they just um, just got a bit too much on that one. Did Ben Meredith? Um, yeah, needs to look for the corners. But I think the right, the right idea, definitely. I think they. I mean, both teams playing a lot of the territory game here early on, and um, which, um, yeah, as you said, um, just, trying, just trying to build some confidence, get get themselves in, in, in good attacking positions. Yeah, definitely. And it it is uh, very much uh, the attitude of we'll get territory, put pressure on through territory, and uh, be interesting to see how long that lasts. Be too. in terms of game plans, do, do you know? Do most teams sort of say to themselves early on, let's use the kicking game to get get field position? I think so. Um, you know, as you said, it builds confidence, putting themselves in the right areas, especially um, getting um, yeah, getting the getting the ball ball in their hands. You know, if, uh, if the forwards get a nice driving more going, or um, just a few carries, it helps if you're in the right position in the field. You know, to do that. Otherwise, um, you know, a simple mistake in your half, and you and you you know you th find yourself three points down, and then all of a sudden, you know, pressure starts mounting from there. So you're right. It's just a, it's a case of. Um, yeah, who's going to make the first mistake, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah, as, as we've seen uh, this thus far in the season too, those mistakes can be costly. Some of the games, uh, mistakes turning into points for teams. So we are ready to go. We've had a little breather break. The, the forwards have been able to suck some uh, some air into the lungs and we're ready for a West Scarborough scrum just inside the Cotter's low half. Right on the beautifully painted... Field and uh, quite impressive club uh, club field with the painted field it looks a treat here this afternoon a free kick there for an early engage by West Scarborough so a little bit of a pressure release for Cottesloe and uh, I mean just you see what Cott decided to do with the free kick they haven't gone for the scrum so they're doing a little airborne kick with that's a reverse torpedo <laughs> by Robinson and uh, very well taken Robinson so, to Robinson yeah. and uh, back to Robinson again. <laughs> Kuribaki puts it onto the toe. You'd be expecting him to carry, but Absolutely. he's got all the skills. Jonah Placid fields that hits to Peeny Grace, and he puts it skill. onto the foot. So it's a little bit all over the place. We'll have some broken defensive lines here. And Jordan Williams now. He's a very, very good athlete, and that looks forward to me, but it's uh, Ethan Kalis carrying it off. Oh, another great offload. That's Hancock offloading down the, the uh, short. Back to Hancock. Back Hancock, to Hancock will score. And that, that is a fantastic a try by Cottesloe. Good interchange of passing down this closer side to the camera. And Charles Hancock, oh, looking fantastic. Great he's, into he's, play. Got, he's got pace, he's got hands, and he's got a fantastic mullet. <laughs> Doesn't he? Jordan, Jordan did very well here. Just on a great little wall float, as you said. It was a marginally forward, maybe. Well, no one's going to no one's going to check that. Hancock had great, great hands and staying in the in the game. And uh, Ben, ben Sterrett, the over, uh, overhead pass back to Charles Hancock. And what a reply by Cottesloe. And uh, a few kicks there, very in quick succession, opened up the defensive, uh, the defensive line of West Scarborough. They weren't able to get a decent line, and that allowed those offloads by Cottesloe. And they've done, a, they've done very well. And, it, and, and actually showed some confidence there, Pete, just to be able to throw those passes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's a bit of kicking back and forth has just uh, opened things up in the middle, and uh, yeah, if a couple of guys haven't had the you know, hands on the ball, I think you know, um, uh, and uh, that was their real first time, first chance with a bit of a bit of space and a bit of a run, and so uh, it's great to see that into play, and um, and yeah, with, with the forwards especially, it's fantastic. And uh, as we watch here, we've got a good uh, view of this kick from Robinson, and he's put that a little to the right. So both kickers early on. Spraying them slightly offline. And, uh, they'll, they'll be wanting to uh, make sure they fix that up because uh, they wouldn't want it to come down to kicks. So we've got uh, we've got a bit of an arm wrestle starting to build here, and uh, we saw that last week with UWA and uh, Palmyra, very much an arm wrestle, and uh, we're expecting the same here this afternoon. So West Scarborough restart. Shay Whippery takes that ball, and once again looking to exit. Uh, ben Meredith getting a good strike on that and taking it out to the halfway line. So that's a fantastic exit there by Cottesloe. If you, you know, in terms of uh, 
territory exiting your own uh, 22, Pete, getting to halfway is a good result. Oh, absolutely. You take that. Um, anything outside the 10 metre line for me, I'd say I'd take it. <laughs> yeah. So halfway is an absolute bonus. And uh, West Scarborough oh, overthrowing. Some hands in there, and, unfortunately, uh, yes. and uh, someone got a bit too excited. So West Scarborough put themselves under a bit of pressure there. They uh, overthrow on the line out um, and had to scramble back and uh, not holding their own feet at the breakdown. It's allowed Cottesloe the opportunity to... Now, a good strike here by Robinson will put the ball... Uh, down into the corner, and he's going for a goal, I think. He said, bring the tee. So That's right. He's got, a, he's got that breeze behind him, so this shouldn't be a problem at all for distance. But um, he's looking for a better strike than that first one that he just hit there now. He kind of got a bit, bit under it. So, um, yeah, we look forward to seeing where this one goes. And in terms of goal kicking, Pete, which obviously you're a terrible goal kicker in your uh, yeah. prime uh, <laughs> you, you, you get excited when, like, as a left footer from the right-hand side of the field with a little bit of a breeze which is coming from left to right over your shoulder, you're, you're, pr you're probably thinking, oh, this is perfect. This is perfect conditions for me to hit this. It is, isn't it? But it's the worst as a kicker when you put in that position and you're like, oh, everyone's expecting me to get this one. You, you, know, you, you, you put a bit of pressure on yourself and uh, I suppose that's the kind of stuff as a kicker you want to make sure you block out and uh, and focus on the job on hand. And uh, I think he's done that just right. It's just and snuck in. <laughs> that is a great kick there. And so so he's, he's, uh, he's done you justice there, Pete. He's yep. uh, been able to handle the pressure. And uh, there is a penalty to Ethan Robinson. So he takes uh, Cottesloe to that three-point lead. And uh, it makes you wonder whether West Scarborough just start to question what, they're, what they've got to be doing, making sure that they've, uh, once as Pete said at the start, make sure they're doing their basics well. So they restart and go long again. And... Uh, Straight to Ben Meredith, who clears there. Again, out towards the 10-metre line. And almost like a... Uh, now replay. Clone of the first one, and he hasn't got just as far. He's uh, got about 45 metres out there, so uh, by Pete's reckoning, you'd still take that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'd, uh... West Scarborough under pressure in the line. They win it, but they win it ugly, and uh, they've gone long. This is uh, Leslie carrying hard and forward. Opting for the kicking option here again. I see Mel Max is sitting back in the pocket, but now forwards are giving a bit of go forward here. So he's going to have a spread the wall, get it to Jonah Placid Jonah. on the wing, and he's found some space. He's kept the ball in, but uh, it's oh, gone forward. He's lost it forward, yeah. Coming back for a penalty to West Scarborough. So they probably understood they had the, the penalty advantage, and uh, Max Bury just throwing that long ball and uh, giving Jonah some space to work in. And, even though he's been, as I said a few weeks ago, he's been in a good paddock, but he's still got some acceleration. So he's a hard man to a uh, hard man to bring down, Jonah Placid. And so it'll be very interesting to see how Max Bury goes here. He's, he probably hasn't spent a great deal of time with the West Scarborough boys. Oh, he's hit that one beautifully into the slight breeze. Isn't it? <laughs> His right. forwards will be happy with that. I'd say, I'd say he's just won them all over with that <laughs> kick, hasn't he? Because uh, absolutely, that has put West Scarborough in a fantastic position to do what they did early on and uh, win the line out and rumble it forward and look for Ford Hemi to get his second try of the afternoon. Yeah, they'll be looking to do exactly the same thing. You would imagine. I mean, especially Cottesloe who weren't so good at defending that first one up. So you just got to get the line out right first. Yeah, so maybe they should go back to Norris, who's jumping at two, and just win the ball first. So uh, Cottesloe now being able to relieve the pressure. It looks like they might do a uh, couple of forward carries. And that's Hancock, the uh, try scorer. Just taking it forward, just gaining a little bit of extra space and probably taking Hunt closer to that sideline so he can box kick to exit. Sets himself. And uh, puts a good ball up there with Peary coming through. And and there's a penalty, and you, you would think that that's only a penalty because uh, well, Peary just had uh, had eyes for the ball the whole time, you'd suggest? Yeah, he did. I mean, but there was no... <laughs> he's just kept his eyes on the ball the whole time, and it wasn't too dangerous in the end, but it was not the right thing, wasn't it? Well, it makes you... I sort of do question this sometimes, that if that yeah. just becomes a genuine contest, why is it not play on? Uh, it, it's a it's a tough one, isn't it? Because uh, you know, everyone you you got to play it on uh, on its merit, and uh, I agree with you there. Uh, we we could have played on, but uh, the rules are rules, and uh, you know it's, it's difficult to try and uh, <laughs> judge each one individually. Yes, and so they've gone to Leslie in the middle of the line out, but uh, 
Unfortunately, not straight. So the inconsistency of West Scarborough's line out continues today. They start off brilliantly. They've just sort of stumbled a little bit here and uh, unfortunately lost a little bit of the pressure that they had made, they'd started to build. I think you'll find with this breeze that we've got here coming over our right shoulder here from, um, from, from the south that we're not going to get too many line-outs on this side of the field, Dwayne. I think we're going to be looking at a lot um, from a distance. So um, unless, uh, you know, Cottesloe come down to the northern side here and get in the corner. But uh, I think play's going to, a lot of play is going to happen on that side of the field. Well, I'll have to get the binoculars out maybe. But uh, we go from, uh, I think that, is that Kayla's playing at eight or playing at six? But uh, they've, they've, they've muffed it at the back of the scrum there. So Cottesloe uh, still got it there. That looking, is not pretty. Looking to carry it out through Faulkner. And they're getting the support around. Hunt shuffles his way to the back of the ruck looking to exit. And uh, he'll be happy to put that long. And it is a great oh, that's a great, that's a great exit from a nine close to his own line. And once again, beyond the 40-metre line. So relieving the pressure really well for Cottesloe. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of pressure off the tens, doesn't it? It's um, both nines here today. have got good boots, and uh, I, I, I played a few games for uh, last year with um, with Phoenix, and uh, it just uh, it, it makes such a difference being able to kick that ball from from just inside the twenty-two as opposed to passing it all the way back to the ten. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but uh, as I said, you, you you need to have the nine with the boot to be able to do that, and, and he's done that beautifully today, and and uh, and. Um, uh, Robertson, Henry's doing the same thing for, for West Scarborough. So they'll be using that a lot and, um, and, and, and yeah, the Tens will be enjoying that. <laughs> yeah, it just takes that little bit of pressure off the Tens. As we see Louis David getting a little bit of cosmetic surgery on the noggin. Just a tiny little I think little, that's tiny happened a few cut. times, <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd imagine. Yep, a tiny Louis. little cut, but uh, he had a little <laughs> bit of blood, so they are, uh, they're just patching him up and he'll certainly look like a warrior after this. But he, he certainly is a warrior for West Garby. He, you, you know the role that he plays. He's, he's there to get some really good go forward in, in attack and to be very secure in defence and, and shore up that midfield. So we wouldn't expect anything different from Louis Absolutely. David this afternoon. Whether he's got tape around his head or not, he'll do the job for you. So Jonah Placid, Dr. Jonah Placid comes over to lend his uh, medical support. A little bit of a lull in proceedings. If you were if you were coaching coaching Cottesloe this afternoon, Bash, how would you how would you suggest the first twenty minutes have been for them? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll have a look at that lineout. Um, Thanks, mate. I think uh, apart from the lineout, I think things have been going pretty pretty smoothly. Come on. And so we've just uh, managed to get the referees' comms uh, in, in line as well. So uh, West Scarborough win that Emmy's line. Emmy's got a nice out. straight one there. And, oh, oh, no. Ashley Bivers has just coughed it up there. Okay. Uh, changing the ball now for Cottesloe on the run. That's, uh, Phil Sawalo having a good, good carry in the middle. Go! And he is a big human who can take it forward. And once again, it goes to Hunt's foot, and he's picked the space in behind. And that's a fantastic kick there, and and this this is local knowledge, isn't it? Yeah, as I said, it's uh, that's the corner where a lot of play should be happening. Scarborough taking a quick throw, and I, and that's a good option too because uh, you get you can get pretty bogged down there in that in, the, in that southern corner, um, yeah. with the wind just coming to a face, and then you got really got to drive it out, and then try and box kick it from your nine just to try and relieve a bit of pressure. But I think the quick throw is a is a really good option, and they'll be happy. They'll, um, uh, they'll be happy with just getting towards the, the ten meter line. And really well played there by Will Court. A good, 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 good thinking and uh, good play to, to Penny Grace to exit there. And as Cotters like go to the edge and uh, throw a horrendously forward pass, um, and everybody in the crowd uh, has seen that and agreed uh, by Kyle Burnett, and he calls that forward. But Cotters definitely looking to use their backs there and play wide. And, uh, Jonah Plasser coming in hard there, just putting a bit of pressure on that pass, and um, it's worked in his favour. Yeah, because if uh, if that had gone to hand, uh, West Scarborough were stretched and under a hell of a lot of pressure there. So uh, Jonah making a, a good call just to put that pressure on that pass. 
up that mark, so don't cross it. I'll make sure that they don't go too far back, so we're not, we're not staying too far apart. Kyle, the following proceedings there, the scrum yeah, time, Dwayne. Kyle Bernard, very, you know, having a chat to the front row, just uh, talking tech, uh, technique and technical stuff. Into West Scarborough. Bind. Henry Robertson looking to feed the scrum. And going down there. So, and there we go, West Scarborough getting the penalty. I'm saying that uh, the tight head there, Mariko Fanasanuku, hinging, going to ground. So West Scarborough. Going to put this long, and that is a that's a fantastic kick there by Max Bury, pushing them deep into Cotter's Lows at 22, and we'll see if they can get their line out right here. As we see on the far side of that scrum there, and Asanuku going to ground and just hinging. And you'll probably say, "No, it wasn't me." And that pressure's on there, and that's uh, Mio who takes the ball. From a, uh, a little tap down, West Scarborough looking to pepper the line. Good position here for Scarborough now. They've got some forwards in to keep going around the corner, and they've got the penalty. And as much as uh, much as Cotter's I was trying to influence Cole Burnett there to say, no, that's our ball we got on ball. That's another penalty to West Scarborough there. So probably a little bit of ill discipline by Cotter's has probably cost them a little bit of a uh, little bit of territory and possession here early on. Oh, that was a fantastic kick by Bury, putting him in the corner there, straight into the breeze. Um, yeah, I, I well, couldn't have picked that any better. It was um, it's put them in a great position. Line a little bit scrappy, but they won it, and, and this is what's, what's come of it. They got a shot for three points, so um, yeah, they, they'll be happy with this. Just uh, and we, we would suggest that uh, Max Bury will uh, slot this over. I don't want to put the uh, the mocker yeah, on him, put but put the mock on him. Um, you really do when you get in the situation, Pete, and you've got a kick there, penalty. <coughs> And, you, you, could, you know, if you were allowed to throw it over, you could easily throw it over. <laughs> yeah. uh, is, it, is it just saying to yourself, process? That's all it is, just a process. Yeah, oh, you have to, um, because you said those are the, the, gar the guaranteed ones, aren't they? Well, that's what uh, everyone assumes. But, um, yeah, you've got to make sure you just you stick with your process, and that's, um, that's something you've got to do with every kick. Yeah, nicely struck there by... Bury, and that's an eight all. Of the, the arm wrestle continues. continues that's right. And a little bit of a, a little bit of a step in the West Scarborough's stride as they come back. I think West Scarborough will be happy with this position. You know, they, as I say, they're playing into that little breeze. But um, so as long as they can stay in the hunt here and keep scores pretty level into going into half time, I think they'll definitely take that. And a Gio Leotuala, who's been quiet this afternoon, puts it along again, and there's no surprise there. And it's Louis David who just uh, coughs it up a little bit. And uh, they're looking to exit there and uh, probably not getting as much on that kick as Josh Tinamana wanted. And that's where Cottesloe yeah. want to be, don't they? They want to put nice hard balls into that corner because that's the one that's uh, pretty difficult to get out of. And, uh, and this is where they find themselves, as you mentioned, and, and they've lost the line out. That's uh, Billy Brown taking the ball forward there for West Scarborough and it goes to Tinamana. He's attacking the line and taking him on and using his pace. Yeah, and that's Bury Max Bury. Sorry, Bury. It looked like yeah. uh, Josh Tinamana, but he's won it. Uh, uh, the oh, one the contact, put the he put it on the foot and it stayed in. So he's maintained the pressure, but were there options around him that he could have passed to? But that, that's fantastic. He, he took the line on and he backed his pace there and he's got a bit of pace too. So oh, he broke the line. Great bit Looked of time, great right little there show there. Passed. Nah, shown his skills that he can put it onto his left foot. And, uh, Get up, Get just up. puts the pressure back on Cotter's low now. They're playing the game in the right end of the field when they're doing this, West Scarborough. That's for one, one, one sure thing. Great bit of toe there from the 10. Definitely had some pace. So they'll be aware of that now, Cottesloe's midfield defence. And cleanly taken there by Sterrett and offloaded by... Hunt goes to Kalis. Kalis without his headgear this afternoon. Carrying the ball hard as he does. Go back to Robinson and he launches that. And uh, tests Jonah Placid. And it's gone over Jonah's head and uh, he's had to reel around 
He'll pick it up and hit Tapini Grace in the middle of the field, about 40 metres out. Tapini Grace will attack from his own line. And that's a big hit on Will Calder on the other side there. That was GL here to Arla, I think, who got that. There's West Scarborough looking to set something up here, and Adidan Beach is taking it forward. Robertson reaching in to get it. Mio carrying. He's only got one he way. He was never going to pass Mio. that ball, was he? <laughs> he loves to go it's been on you. Oh, it's gone low. The ball didn't go to hand. playing off the deck. But another penalty there for West Scarborough. So there's a little bit of... Uh, Discipline creeping into the Cottesloe game here. West looking good on the side there. If they kept that ball, that ball in the hand, a bit numbers of a loose, on. Yeah, loose pass there by, by Robertson, but they had numbers, didn't they? Pay definite numbers. That would have been interesting to see if that had just gone to the first receiver, and then they just used simple passes to draw and draw and pass. I dare say uh, someone from West Scarborough on the edge would have been down the sideline. Maybe Jonah Placid. But they've still got the ball and they've got the opportunity now. Uh, sorry, where's Josh? Josh, you got here or you got in the 15? Thank you get the sense of the momentum has just shifted a little bit in, in, the, in, in West's favour. Oh, as I not, say that, Jerry <laughs> hasn't found touch. <laughs> not going out, but uh, it's going to come back to a fantastic boot in return. So... The net gain for West Scarborough there for that penalty was about 11 metres. Uh, Max, Max Bury would not be happy with that at all because uh, they've only made 11 metres when they could have possibly been making 40 to 45 there from a, a, a good kick. So West Scarborough, and that's not straight, so their line-out woes continue. And uh, a few new, like, you know, some new faces in the West Scarborough team, especially in this forward pack and their jumpers. And, uh, Regan Leslie just uh, having a quick chat there to Ford Hemi, just trying to work out what's going on. Because uh, they're, they're quite, uh, quite a big lock pairing. Ash Vivers, South African, and uh, Regan Leslie, quite new to the club. So need to, need to settle in. Two very big towers there in the middle. So um, they sh really shouldn't be having a problem with their lineup, isn't it? So they just no. need to get that sorted out and, um, and build some consistency there. And, and, uh, Ethan Kalis works hard to get that ball back for Hunt. Goes to Meredith. Meredith turns it back inside. It's become a wrestle in the middle of the field, but some good leg drop. I think that's Jordan Williams yeah, in amongst good, all good that. Good carry by Jordan Williams. And they've got the Skull penalty rolling, advantage not here. Not rolling away there. Who's that? No. Looks like is it Billy Brown? I think's got himself on the wrong side of that tackle. As, a, as all uh, all good sevens, that's Norris. That's Norris. That's uh, he's, he's pushed the boundaries of the law there. You know, he actually got trapped in that breakdown. And sometimes, sometimes you just got to take it on the chin, don't you, Peach? Just go, I cannot go anywhere. I can't get yeah. out of here. And uh, unfortunately, that's... Yeah, it's a good run. leg drive there and, um, by Jordan Williams. And um, yeah, he just found himself on the wrong side. And so when the cleaners come over, it is, you just find yourself trapped and there's absolutely nothing you can do. You can try your best, but... Um, I say, especially if the teams are wanting quick ball and they've got some good go forward, then it's just, it's, it just doesn't look good. You know, where the ball should be, should be coming out nice and quickly. It just um, and, and it makes it an easy decision for Carl there in the end. As Ethan Robinson uh, places the ball easily on the tee, sets himself about 30 my, 39 metres out right in front. And he looks like he's struck that one pretty well. Played for the breeze a little bit there, and he's done it nicely. So that's easy. It just allows Cott to squeak out to a three-point lead again. And that's Cole Burnett just saying there, one of those awkward situations. Uh, take it on the chin and move on. It's Max Bury makes his way to halfway and will kick from the centre of the Gulls logo. And that's awkward. Stare it. Now that's been turned over there by West Scarborough from that, uh, that awkward take by Stare it. It went to ground. There's a Billy Brown just shrugging him off in that gr Great very carry. green uh, green headgear. But uh, good carry there. Ford Hemi stepping off his right foot, beating the first tackler. Jirai Moore trying blue. to wrestle him back. He's come Robertson, Bury. 
Going through the midfield, West Scarbury here, back to Bury. Looking at Tinamata as a, uh, a dummy, but uh, Kuribaki has uh, intercepted that and gone forward. Hunt gets himself into position and Meredith sets himself up and they go back through the middle. This is Sterrett looking to carry it into contact. And that's going to be pressure there and uh, very well done by West Garber. Made a good tackle, got Sterrett to ground. Eden Beach putting pressure on there and uh, Mio as well. So they've got the turnover. Just got a man down there, boys. And uh, I dare say, Pete, they'll be looking for points here just to square it up again. Yeah, definitely. As I said, they'll try and just stay in the race, yeah, keep the arm wrestle on and um, yeah, keep things as level as they can um, going into the second half. And uh, yeah, with that slight breeze in their face, I, I, I don't think Bury will have a problem with distance here. So, uh, yeah, I, I think they'll, they'll definitely have a, have a shot at the three. That's Ford Hemi. He's just in, in going into that contact there. And uh, I think it was the original... This is the original contact. penalty. Yeah, yeah, so he's okay. a little bit, sh little bit uh, shaky on that ankle, but uh, he's tough and he loves playing footy forward, Hemi. So he will not be wanting to go off. Bit of a grimace there, but he rejoins the West Scarborough boys and uh, they will call for the tee. Holding. Oh, we've got it wrong. <laughs> He's going for touch. They're backing themselves here, and they're going yeah. to their line out. But, uh, I think they've, uh, I think they've very quickly realised that Max Bury has got one big boot on him, and uh, he will get plenty of metres. Yeah, so once again, quarters low under a little bit of pressure here. It'll be interesting to see whether they can maintain their effort in the line out to uh, put pressure on Ford Hemi's throw and the the, the West ball, Scarborough boy. line out. It's this position I spoke about a few weeks ago as a ten. You'd go up to your forwards, especially your hooker, and say, "Listen, mate, just give me, just give me, just give me ball. Um, take something simple. Doesn't matter if it's if it's front ball. Just let's get, let's uh, let's utilise this opportunity we have yeah, deep in the twenty-two and uh, and see if we can get some points on the board. We just need to see what they go and they go deep. They go to the back, <laughs> and that's Billy Brown going up, flying high, and taking it very easily. And they uh, they're happy to rumble the West Scarborough boys, and they've done it well. They're looking quite solid. In their setup of that more, but they play Robertson, Louis David, and Josh Tinner manages driving him through contact, and Jariah Moore on that defense. ball. And that's, uh, that's what you want from every good seven is to be able to sniff around those tackle zones, get your timing right, and uh, get on ball. And Ford Hemi just unable to even budge Moore there. Jiraiya Mua getting on that ball and not being able to be moved. Great tackle there by Gio. Nice little tussle there between the 12s. Season campaigners, those two. And you sort of say season campaigners, but Gio is still quite young and uh, very talented youth rugby player coming through the rugby, day or oh. rugby WA pathway. As, well as Cottesloe set up there, driving Maul, setting Phoenix Hunt up to box kick. And once again, as Peter said, he can kick well, and he puts that on Will Calder, who takes it quite well, shrugs that first tackle, breaks the second one, offloads, and Isaac Mio goes into contact. And, uh, Hancock Charles all over Hancock. that ball. He's having a cracking game when he gets involved in the game, Charles Hancock, this afternoon. And that, that, that is a valuable penalty in that part of the field. Oh, it's a big shift, isn't it? From one end of the field now, the Cotters like get a chance. Now, then Calder did well here to get away. Great little offload to Mio. And Hancock just getting over that ball so quickly, and uh, you're not going to move him away easily, aren't you? He got good position, didn't he? He was able to get that little, little bit of a side on position so he's not uh, a direct target. He presents some hard points, you know, his hip, his shoulder. So anyone wanting to clear him out is, is going to be hitting something hard. So he did very well there. Uh, Meredith probably would have liked to have chewed off a little bit more. They're about uh, nine to 18, 19 metres out from uh, West Garborough's line. But hard on attack here, Cotters. Though they haven't seen much of West Garborough's 22. So they'll be wanting to spend a little bit of time here if they can. And that's one by Cotters Low. Come off the back. He'd hunt, hunt, hits career. Barkey carries strong, goes forward. It's good forward ball for Cotters Low. It's slow down. 
Suwalu carries hard. Hunt looking to come back to, to the play. And, uh, that's Fanasa Nuku carrying. Wrestling into contact. Good passage this by Cotazo. Want to keep the ball in hand here. Keep it nice and tight. And they're very close. They've very, got very the inches from the line. They've they gone back they to Fanasa there. Nuku. Nuku having another run. The West oh, he's... Wiscara's defence is up to the challenge at the moment. Getting themselves organised for another barrage from the Cottesloe forwards. The Sawala carrying again with, with uh, some good defence here by Scarborough. Kamai going in there to clear out and making it a little bit of a mess. The Cottesloe got a forward pod set Hancock up. Hancock waiting for this one. It's got a bit of support Kalis behind him. latching and driving. And they must Looks get like the millimetres from the line. Or are they over? Kyle Burnett ruling that West Scarborough have been able to get their maroon jerseys underneath the ball and holding them up. But uh, Hancock looking for his second try of the day. And, uh, dare say if he'd scored then he would have uh, been telling the story that he'd run 50 metres to do it after the game. Oh, proper two tries in the game. Two tries and a half. <laughs> Take that. That's the story we're going to the bye tonight. Uh, they banned him from the forward, uh, the front rows club. <laughs> he gave for the line and drop out. And it's a good one taking back to halfway. The Perry brings the ball back. Meredith stepping left, right. Goes into contact. He's got his support there, but rolling the extra roll. It's Kurt Tia making a good contact, making a good tackle and putting the pre or wasn't uh, it was uh, Mia making the tackle, but Kurt Tia just pressuring the ball and showing Kyle Burnett that there was a threat on it. And uh, Max Bury hasn't put that ball out and uh, Jordan Williams stumbles as he takes it but gets back to his feet. And this boy is a big athlete. He'll be loving the space to run back into. And, uh, he's got a few on him there and uh, he You'd suggest that's for not releasing there. There was no release. Or saying he's off his feet, but he could have probably picked any number of penalties there. Eden Beach just sort of shaking his head. But, uh, he's not happy with that, but um, we've seen quite a few penalties back and forth for both teams at the moment. There's just um, a lot of te both teams showing a bit of ill discipline, and um, yeah, it's just. Uh, you know, it just it just it just throws you right back in, in, in the defensive position. You kick back another 40 meters, and you're on the defense again. So, um, yeah, I think both teams need to look at that for the second half for sure. And you you would think the the team that can get some good continuity and build pressure through that continuity, uh, Pete, would get some benefit with uh, not only field position but opportunity for points. As we see, Cottesloe win their line out, and, uh, and it's messy, but it's it's, it's uh, lost forward by Cottesloe and. Billy Brown sort of tries to work his way around the back towards the short side and get bundled into touch. And, uh, just waiting to see what Kyle Burnett calls here. And, uh, and so just uh, there, so it's just technically there. So, so being stripped into touch, and that's a knock forward. So, so West Scarborough now have got the option they can go for a scrum. Or they can have the line out. Knock on, red scrum. And uh, Josh Tinamana says, we'll take the scrum, please, sir. And uh, you would think that uh, we'd be very, very close to half time here. Uh, it would be a case for West Scarborough just to survive the scrum and uh, clear their 22, get themselves out of uh, out of the, the 22 zone and a bit less pressure. And see if that leads them into half time. Good solid scrum by West Scarborough. Robertson. It's Louis David goes out the back to Max Bury and he has got some wheels. Kurabaki it was who came out of the line and he's he's ended up on the bottom field. He's gone that far, but that's been lost at the breakdown. And uh, another penalty offside, and they've gone quickly. A quick tap. As they go. Bury taking uh, Kurabaki on. They've gone to the breakdown, Robertson. And there's some pressure there, and you'd question whether that was offside. But uh, and there we go. There's the advantage there. So West Scarborough have got penalty advantage again. So this little discipline by Cottesloe is allowing the pressure off 
of West Scarborough as Louis David carries forward again. That's the ball back. Robertson clears. Bury goes through. Eden Beach, who steps off his right foot and beats the first tackle of Meredith, goes into contact. Robertson. Bury takes the ball to the line, steps back into Meredith, and it's 10 on 10. Robertson goes to the short side there. It's Mio making that long ball to Calder on the far side. He's trying to work his way through some heavy traffic, but can't do so. As West Scarborough work their way off the line. Regan Leslie going into contact there, but... Uh, all down, all down. The Great passage of play there for, for West Scarborough. There's some good continuity, some good ball carries. And, um, I mean, pity about the end there, result, with, which, which is a penalty towards them. But uh, I think they'll, they'll definitely take some confidence out of that. I thought that was really good, good, good connecting. Um, everyone getting their hands on the ball and um, a few offloads and uh, just a little bit of a spark there, it looked like. I mean, we spoke a little bit about that continuity, and that, and that was the continuity that we were, we, we were talking about. And, but unfortunately, ball carrier being uh, almost stranded from his uh, support, and uh, allowing Cottesloe to get on the ball. So Cottesloe now with probably one of the last opportunities in the half, you would suggest, <laughs> to score and to use the final uh, little bit of uh, this breeze before they have to go into it, into the second half. And they won it well at the front there. Can my going up and West have stepped off, but uh, Cottesloe have realised and they've played off the back Hunt into Fanasa Nuku goes into contact. He fights hard man to get down. He is a big unit. Swallow, Swallow looked like he was going to pass that ball, but um, oh, good steal here from Scarborough. Steal was good, not one only. Steel was good. Uh, so Ford Hammy is he's got the steal and unfortunately sort of just dropped the ball and then. He's probably arguing that it had, he, when he dropped it, he's dropped it through his legs and out the back. But Cole Burnett uh, saw something different. Probably dropped it forward before scraping it back and it going through his legs. Cole's obviously still got a bit of time on his watch there because still we're going in deep into the, into the into this first half extra time. Yeah, it looks like, but um, we've still got some more more time to play with. Yeah, we did. We did. Uh, we had a little bit of uh, injury time, but. Uh, you wouldn't think it would have been too much more than five minutes. So we'll see, uh, see what happens here. And it, it, it'd definitely be a case. And imagine if, uh, if Cottesloe scored here and went into halftime with won that momentum and, uh, and a converted try. You're looking at 18-8. It's a paint, big swing. Paints a very different picture at halftime, doesn't it, for both teams? Absolutely. And they're in a great position. Yeah, got a bit of space on both sides. Ben Merritt is right, right behind the back of the scrum, so... They've got both ways to go. The scrum's not a good one from Cottesloe, but um, here goes Phoenix Hunt. Kuribaki carries. Carrying. Beats off David for the first tackle, but not Tina Manor. Go to Hunt. Hunt hitting that forward runner. Coming back at the ruck and uh, tackled well by West Garber because it slows the ball down just that little bit. Fanasa Nuku juggling as he's taking the ball and he's lost it, but it's gone backwards and it's played to Meredith. Meredith hits Lear Tuala doing some footwork in Kuribaki. Takes it into a very big contact there. And that was Ethan Beach, I think, uh, made a good contact in that tackle. Sterrett offloading, being first receiver. Back to Meredith in the backdoor play. Goes into contact, and that ball's been lost. And Eden Beach jumps on it and takes it forward. So West Scarborough releasing the pressure and taking the ball to Penny Grace, pushing himself up from fullback and taking the line on. He's got the ball back to the 40-metre line. And there is another penalty. Another penalty. Yep. Must be up. And, uh, Kyle Burnett, Burnett just saying, uh, Jeriah Muan he needs to be on his feet. If he's going to be playing the ball. Both teams attacking the breakdown so aggressively. And um, you have to say they've both been pretty successful. There has been a fair bit of pressure there. And, and it's made the breakdowns a little bit ugly, which has made some for some slow ball. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if in the second half which team can actually fix that up and get some quick ball and then see if that builds pressure. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they, they revert back to a bit more kicking and a bit more territory as well, just because the penalties obviously just then give the opposition a good good shot at some points or just put you right back on the back foot. So um, yeah, we'll see what, what, what the coaches have to say at half-time. It's West Scarborough looking to win the ball on the line-out. 
And they've got a missed lift. But Billy Brown at the back has uh, secured the ball. So, um, Jeroen Miller is on it, but it's another penalty. And uh, this will be interesting. There could be a yellow card here. Carbonet. Uh, yeah, no, I don't have an issue with seven. Seven is fine. We've just had a lazy tackle by it's going around the blokes neck, okay? This man's not a problem. High tackle. Does it not care that if he's falling? It does. It? it does. Book and up we're falling over here. My issue, number of penalties not. Next one's going to the bin. So there you go. There's the warning to Ethan Carlos around uh, the number of penalties, but he's just saying it was a little bit of a lazy tackle around high the tackle. Uh, high tackle there, so the penalty to West Scarborough. Yeah, it was Phil Sawalu there just rolling away on, you know, onto the wrong side of, uh, of the ruck there and just getting in, in the way of West Scarborough. So um, he, he's the one that's been penalised. But both teams really, really got to look at the discipline and, uh, and the penalty count. And this could add an interesting chapter to this first half if West Scarborough get the roll on here oh, as yeah, they, they do and they're driving and it's looking like nothing's going to stop them here. The Cottesloe backs are getting involved to try and stop this. It's, they must be very be close to the left. line. Ford Hemi looking for his second try. And he's in there. Oh, he's been... Yeah, he's been... He's got it. And it is. Yeah. And he's got it a is. second all Hemi, but uh, man, that was a beautiful rolling mall, that one. I want to stop that. And it yeah, looks like it could getting... pos possibly be Eden Beach who's been pulled up there off the deck and uh, hard to see exactly who did score that. But either way, West Scarborough done very well. They set that line out uh, up really well and got the driving mall off the back. And there's Ford Hemi at the back driving it. He's got Eden Beach right next to him. So it'll be interesting to see which one ends up with that ball over the line because they do peel to the left. And that's uh, how they get over the line. But it is, that is uh, Ford Hemi there. At jersey number two, just lying there. And he's, that's his second for the day. And uh, you know, the fact that he loves his rugby, and he also loves scoring tries, is a great result there for West Scarborough. And there we go. We, we were talking about Cottesloe potentially going in at 18 to 8. We're looking at now with uh, West Scarborough, the pension, potential of going into half time at 15 11. You would, you would think with, with what, they, what we've seen from Max Bury's boot in the first half, that all he's going to be doing in his own, ha in his own half in the second half <laughs> will be kicking to the far left corner of the screen. And unfortunately, he's pushed that. He's pushed that, but... Right. Um... And uh, there we go, half-time there. West uh, Scarborough 13, Cottesloe 11. And it's, uh, we, we mentioned it a couple of times that being an arm wrestler, and it certainly has been, and... Probably one of the biggest things in the first half there, Pete, was the ill discipline from from both teams, but probably mostly from Cottesloe, giving away plenty of penalties, and it was almost like just giving the opportunity for the other team to piggyback up the field. Yeah, I think Colburn has done the right thing there. He needs to, I would say, he needs to go to both teams and give them both a warning now because um, there's been far too many penalties, and it's just, it just, it's just back and forth. There's just huge swings in the game. I mean, we saw there just before half time, Cottesloe had a great attacking opportunity. Couple of penalties. Scarborough got a great attacking lineup, and they come over, come away with a try. When we thought Cottesloe were going to come away with a try on, on this left hand side, so it's just it's just too big a swing. They just um, the ill discipline is, is costing both of them at the moment. And, and Pete, if you're a betting man, who would you be uh, who would you be betting on in the second half? Now, who, uh, I'm, I'm making <laughs> you take your Cottesloe hat off here. I think. Yeah, no, you are. Um, it's uh, look. I, I definitely think, as you said, Bury's going to be really excited about getting in that second half and just punching Cottesloe deep down at the, in the right hand corner He's, that boot of his is really looking looking on song today so um, I, I think you're right I think and, and going ahead slightly ahead in, in, at half time they'll have a bit of confidence so I think he'll sit back in the pocket him and, uh, and Henry Robertson just with his right boot just tucking it away deep into Cottesloe in, in, in that right hand corner and uh, as, we've, as we've said, it's going to be difficult for them to get out of there. So, um, yeah, I definitely say the um, things are leaning towards uh, West Scarborough here at the moment. No, I, I dare say I would agree with you there, Peters. We just went through the, the, the early tries in the game. And that, that, the try by Cottesloe down this left side of the field was fantastic. The interchange of passes, uh, between, especially between uh, Hancock and Sterrett, and uh, Hancock getting the benefit of the try. But uh, it was, uh, some, some good rugby in amongst some ill discipline. Would that be a way of describing the first half? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's, that's definitely. 
as we uh, we just look at uh, what uh, West Scarborough have been through. You know, they've uh, they've had a tough start to the season. And uh, looking to bounce back here, and you probably say to yourself, you know, taking on the second uh, second place team, it uh, it's a big challenge. But uh, they've definitely turned up today, as we see that uh, Troy to Ford Hemi there, but, uh, Ethan Ethan Carlos, look at him offloading there. There's Hancock, looking his shape on the inside, go to the outside. Sterrett gets it, puts a basketball pass back over the top to Hancock, and uh, he loved it, I think. He would have been very oh. chuffed with himself there. And, uh, and uh, as we, uh, we will go to a break here at Harvey Field and we'll be back for the second half of this great arm wrestle. Do you love the game? Do you want the best seat in the house? Help make the game better. Involved. Become a referee. And a welcome back to Harvey Field. And what a picture it is on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. We're enjoying a, uh, a bit of a battle here, a bit of a battle on the field and battle on the scoreboard. And uh, yeah, we will uh, be very interested to see whether West Scarborough can use this little bit of a breeze to their advantage. And uh, I dare say we might see a fair bit of rugby played down in the uh, the far left corner of your screen, and uh, I dare say the instructions at half time from uh, from Jeremy Thrush and Scott Batters, the West Scarborough coaches, would have been: let's play field position, let's trap Cottesloe in that corner, and force them to work their way out. And as Cottesloe get themselves into position. Cole Burnett in his 150th game. It's a great, it's a, it's a great effort. 150 games refereeing, and uh, it's fantastic that we've got uh, got the referees and doing a good job. And uh, yeah, definitely, anyone interested in being a part of the game and maybe not playing anymore, uh, wanting to to pick up a whistle. 
it's you know it's, it's probably one of the best positions in the game. You don't you, you don't get you don't get whacked, say, but you get you... to feel all the excitement of being there. As uh, Max Bury, the <laughs> Max Bury the puts it down into the corner that they want to be, and uh, Robinson drops it on the boot and replies. Oh, there's some good contact there as West Scarborough in attack, 39 metres out from a Cottesloe line. Ford Hemi just burrows through the contact. And uh, we've got a change there. We've got Rory Walker on for West Scarborough playing nine. Looking to clean up a bit of a mess there. The breakdown goes back to Ford Hemi, but the call is a knock on. So that little error releases the pressure. It was uh, Vivers on the ground there, and he's just, just sort of, sort of as, as the tackles rolled over. I think he's been hard done by there. I think like it came back off the hand, if, um, if anything, but uh, it did nudge it forward off the boot, so it did look a little bit suspect, and so uh, Carl Bennett just not uh, um, not going to settle for anything else, but uh, sit down for a pack down for another scrum. <laughs> Very easy for us Gross. with a reply, replay to uh, to judge and see here, but he obviously saw Set. something. I think we got the best seats in the house here, Dwayne. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we're holding that whistle. And uh, that is going down there. That's Phoenix Hunt just trying to work his way down that short side, but uh, there's been a penalty for Angle. Angle, Angle really? so probably Kurt Tier, I would say, the uh, West Scarborough tight head. Working his way in onto uh, Ford, uh, onto uh, Shane Faulkner, quite a slow hooker. So being picked up for that. Meredith, gaining about 20 metres or so, taking the ball up to halfway. Good to see Ben Meredith back in the team this year again. I think he yeah, struggled with a bit of a knee injury last year, so. Uh, Good to see him fit and, uh, and healthy and back into this collar's low side. And you're only saying that, uh, Pete, so they don't come knocking on your door, <laughs> asking you to put the jersey back on? Oh, that's right. Oh, no. Well, I don't think I'd be answering that phone call. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes to West Scarborough. They've turned it over at the line out and uh, carrying it forward up towards the halfway line. It's Walker hitting Bury to Penny Grace up from fullback. Goes to Jonah Placid on the edge and he carries forward. And his momentum takes him a few extra metres. Rory Walker hits, hits uh, Leslie Regan. Leslie takes it forward. Walker, Bury setting himself up, himself up. He's got options on the inside and on the outside. Goes to the outside. West Scarborough going through the middle of the field through Mio. He oh, offloads. Great offload. And, uh, a bit of pressure there at the breakdown. That's Jeriah Miller. He's working himself into this game quite nicely, and it's really well done. So it's good play there. Mio just offload. Back on the inside, there's Miller just sniffing on it. And Eden Beach not having any effect on Jeriah Miller, who is unstoppable over that ball there. It's and that's great, quick, quick tap. Robinson, he's going to Gio Leotuala, who takes on the line, and he breaks through. He's got some space. He goes to the outside. Oh, he's got Jordan Williams on the outside with some and space. Jordan oh, Williams mate, is he looks an so athlete. Easy. And they have gone over in the corner. And a uh, fantastic start to the second half for Cottesloe. And Jordan Williams, because he is an athlete. He's, oh, he's, he's, where was that in the first half? You just feel like Gio has been quiet. Well, he's just decided to... I think he's called uh, Ethan Robinson for that ball for a quick tap, and they've just gone all the, the full length down the far side there. And I think Jordan, great finish. Yeah, leaving, he's an athlete, isn't he? Uh, he's leaving Will, Will Calder just diving, but not getting close to Jordan Williams. He's fit, like you know that that's a that's the sort of finish you want to see from a winger, winger isn't it? Oh, Just yeah. getting getting a ball from your centres on the edge, opening up the throttle and uh, and just finding the try line nice and easy. It's a great sight to see. I mean, speaking on behalf of a ten, but I think the forwards also love seeing a winger going in the corner. It's uh, it's a good sight. But uh, got everyone off off guard there. I think Robertson with that quick tap. I think everyone just kind of felt it was just going to be status quo and. Um, and uh, now it's a big swing, try in the corner. And definitely, it's a, yeah, a bit of a, ki a bit of a kick in the guts to the West Scarborough team. They'd be disappointed with themselves, but that, as that kick slides away across the face of goal, by Ethan Robinson, he'll be just thinking to himself as he trots back into position what he can do for the next kick. And he might be just telling himself, just go through the process, strike it sweetly, it'll happen. 
Then Max Bury waits on halfway and they will go long. There's no doubt about it. Robinson waits, works around to his left foot and uh, puts it into the crowd about 35 metres out from the line, giving West Scarborough an opportunity that they would have preferred to have been in a couple of minutes ago and not uh, having to work back hard to watch Jordan Williams score a try. So go to the line out. And uh, Regan Leslie goes high. And they've, they've set up that mall again and they're driving forward nice and easy. But it uh, takes Cottesloe a little bit of a time to come back at them. And they've given, Cottesloe have given up a few metres there, but they've gone to Walker. Walker's taken it out the back to Bury. David out the back to Will Calder coming around as a second man play. But they've lost ground here. West Scarborough forwards won't be happy about that. They've only got to Peeny Grace and Jonah Placid on this open side. They've had to go back to Billy Brown, who uh, takes it forward, doesn't get far. And use. Kurt, Kurt Tia picking and driving, just trying to recreate some shape here. Going through their forwards, West Scarborough. Continuing to pick and drive and slowly work their way forward. Go to Bury, Bury out the back to Tapini Grace. Looks to the inside to walk Will Corder again, but uh, he's caught. Walker. Forwards are, forwards are working high for West Scarborough and they're getting some good momentum, good forward, a bit almost too easy, but the backs are just getting pinned deep behind the advantage line, which is making the forwards having to work extra hard. And then Leslie's the and one who's putting his hand the up there. Down. And they've slowed it down. They've got advantage there. But you talk about the uh, West Scarborough forwards working hard. And Billy Brown's one of them and Leslie's the other. And they've been uh, carrying diligently as we go to Tapini Grace. He steps off his right foot, back off his left, left foot, gets shoulders through the contact. A little bit untidy on the ground. And it's very untidy coming back and forth. And Will Corder, he says, I'm going to go Just forward. Just straightening things a bit there. Burrows his head through the tackle. And works it for Tia. Taking the contact. Fighting in the contest. I think Scarborough's still got advantage. And uh, so Colburn come back to it. coming back for the penalty. And he's uh, just saying to Leslie, they're not going to play that. You were uh, probably in the ruck. You can't pick it up when you're in the ruck. But we'll go Happy back to driving, the advantage. But he can't go off his feet. Must stay up. And, uh, so Colburn out there just saying, keep your feet. You definitely make it a contest and drive through, but please keep your feet. And here we go. Bury trying to put it deep into this corner. Scarborough yeah. forwards will be sucking in the big ones there. They worked hard there in the last passage of play, but they were getting some good good momentum. Just the simple pick and go was um, was looking a bit too easy. So um, Cottesloe definitely got to sort out their defence around yeah. the fringes. But Scarborough again on the attack, yeah. and um, let's see where Hemi's going to go in this line out. Yeah, good. thank you. Give You'd think another rolling wall, <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting my ten Point. bucks on that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And the Cotter got his low forwards need to be. They need to be ready for that. They need to be switched on here to hit this and not get it going forward. But it's been overthrown, and Kalis takes it, goes to deck quickly, gets to his feet, scoops it back up at again, and goes again and grabs an extra couple of meters. They go back to Meredith. Meredith across to Gialia Tuala. Hituala, sorry, back to Meredith on the wraparound. Puts it on the boot. It's ugly to Peeny Grace. Takes it cleanly, and he's able to take it back. Robinson snatches at him, but gets to Peeny Grace. Gets through that. Goes down to the left side. He's offloaded to Tamana. He's dropped it on the toe. Then it's Walker. a great pickup. Oh, but Brown's dropped it now. So Walker's thrown a terrible ball under pressure to Billy Brown, who's tried to pick it up on the half volley. Unfortunately, unable to continue to hold it in hand. He's knocked it forward. It's a great pickup by Tinamana there. Old, um, Grace is, Tepini Grace has just dropped it on the foot and uh, it's rolled forward and I thought, oh, there's no way he's going to pick that one up. But he dived on it, scooped it up beautifully and they kept it in play. And Calder's gone and thrown a horrible pass. But they, they're looking dangerous now, Scarborough. They're really... Uh, Coslow struggled to get out of that, and, uh, out, of, out of their 22. And that's where they want to play. Tepini Grace, he breaks that first tackle. Drops it on the toe, as Pete was talking about. And, yeah, well done by Josh Tinamana. Securing the ball. Cottesloe. The walker that threw that ball. Sorry, it wasn't all the... yeah. An unstable front row there. We'll have a, a feed again. Go. 
And uh, Simone Vuitvarata on for West Scarborough there on the side of the scrum. He's a good man to come off the bench. Exciting player to watch. He will add some, uh, he'll add some spice to this West Scarborough forward pack. And the kite forwards under pressure, but they managed to win it. Meredith goes long to Robinson. Robinson to the wing. Jordan Williams opens up the throttle. He's, uh, he's going to take on the defence at the back, but they've earned some very good yards there. It's got messy at the breakdown. They haven't Cena been able to play good. quickly. So Cottesloe trying to put Phoenix Hunt puts it on the boot, on the left boot. It's not a lot of option, not a bad option there by Phoenix Hunt, especially there's some good pressure by Cottesloe and they've got themselves in a good position. They chase through there pressure. and uh, Cottesloe pouring break. into that breakdown. And they've got the ball back. And so West Garber now got to work hard defensively and it's just flicked on. Yeah, the whale side. And they've tapped. And there's that Hancock there. He's Hancock. gone himself and he's wanted he's to score his second. And he has second. Charles Hancock taking the quick tap with all the skill you'd want and taking it forward and crashed over. That was a beautiful quick tap. He's, uh, no he's, hesitation, just dropped it on the toe. You don't want to muck that up as a front roller, do oh, you? Oh, he's, he's done that confidently. <laughs> it's a great option here by, um, by Phoenix Hunt there. He's off the left boot as well. So the, the, to Penny Grace, Penny he was under immense pressure. Yeah, he was in a bit of trouble there and, and caught his pole into this ruck and gone over, which has um, won them the ball back. I think it was, it was Hancock with this quick little offload there. You could see the guys were up onto him. And then and there he goes, up, bashes him way right over. Yeah. And, uh, you know, definitely. Feeling that one, I think it was Hemi as well. As we see. Robinson slots the conversion. So extras. valuable points there for Cottesloe. And a bit of a change, definitely a, a quick change of momentum there. Where Scarborough hard on attack, doing well, putting the pressure on, and then all of a sudden Cottesloe scoring through their big number one, Charles Hancock. There he goes. And oh, Josh Tinamana, he was courageous to put himself in that position to try and cut the legs of Hancock. Yeah, he committed but, himself. <laughs> oh, but there's no stopping him. There's no stopping him, the big mullet. Bury goes long again. Robinson's going to be expecting this every time Cottesloe scorer this afternoon in the second half. Leah Tuala carries. Offloads oh, there. And that's beautiful great. offload. Kriyabaki takes it up the middle of the field. Offloads oh, back to Hunt. Hunt. Hunt going to ground there. And so Cottesloe, once again, back in attack. They've turned the afterburners on. And look, some good, quick hands there. Offloading in the contact, working to the edge of the field. And they'll come back off the far edge. Hunt burrows in to get the ball. Faulkner. Release one. So they go back to Meredith. Meredith Kuribaki. Lear Tuala knew he was going to get hit. Fumbled the ball and West Scarborough come up with it. They've turned it over. Yes, it's a bit messy at the moment. So Tinamana takes it to the line, puts it on the foot. Robinson's back here, sitting nicely behind the line. Gets ankle tapped by Jonah Placid. Hunt takes it. Oh, and that's dropped by Hunt, uh, by uh, Kayla, sorry. And, uh, Came in on the angle there and just um, coughed it up. And Josh Tinamani did well to collect that ball. And, uh, Placid takes it into the contact and this is... Walker playing to Eden Beach. Walker again. It's Bury. Bury. Billy Brown. He's worked hard this afternoon. Billy Brown in his fancy green headgear. And uh, Uritavata picks. Gets uh, wrapped up around the shoulders there. But he's offloaded there. And that's Norris. Norris has put it on the left on boot. On the left boot. And uh, looking to be very right fancy. So West Scarborough, they're showing their intent here. They want to play some rugby now. Uh, Cottesloe have it though, so they've got to work their way back out again. They're burrowing the head down is Faulkner. Doing the hard yards as they set up for Hunt to exit on his box kick. And it's a little tap. He's tapped it over the top. Jonah Placer just scooping it up and trying to run through the shoulder of Shea Wapiri. 
who's been penalty, uh, who's been penalised penalised for offside for being in front of Phoenix Hunt when he's uh, just dinked it over the top. We're looking at Bury hitting Billy Brown there. And, uh, Eric Vata picking it up, and you sort of people sort of talking about that offline the head of Norris off the deck, and it was good. But that was the turnover. Meredith being able to snatch that out of the air as West Scarborough pushed down into the to the corner, looking to set up. I would say another driving mall, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> now you got to stick with what works. Uh, if it ain't broke, Body, don't fix it. Uh, bodies are looking a bit weary now, but. Um, They've still got it. Good and they've position. wheeled it. That's one. Not going forward, but um, they've still got it in a good position there. And um, use it now. Oh, <laughs> Beach has snuck in around the corner. He snuck. He's snuck. He's caught, snuck he's caught Cottesloe napping on the on the open side. And there was no defence there. There was no There's one, no one uh, posting up on that side of the mall. And he, Eden Beach has just opened his eyes to a little opportunity on the open side of the mall. They sort of wheeled it around. They pushed it to the... Cottesloe pushed it towards the posts. And Eden Beach has found himself with the ball in his hand. Work it closer to the line. Game's definitely opened up a little bit, um, Dwayne, now in the second half. Both teams are... Holding the ball in, 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 um, in hand for a bit longer than uh, than what I think I was expecting. We were both talking a bit about territory, maybe in the possibly in the second half, but they both kept it in hand and they both both making good use of it. Yeah, they're wanting to play some rugby, aren't they? And yeah. so it's a, it's actually making for a bit of an entertaining second half here so far. As Max Bury easily slots and that ball through the sticks. So we're... Uh, the arm wrestle continues. It does, it certainly does. And uh, looking at uh, Ethan Beach, he's just popped out there. Kuru Barkey was, uh, was the defender on that open side. He, he didn't know whether to join the mall defensively or not. And that just opened up that little bit of space for Beach to uh, drop himself over the line. with The ball tucked under his right arm. And it's... Uh, Try scoring feast for number ones this yeah, afternoon. Yeah, well, front rowers. I mean, isn't it? I mean, forward him. He's got a, got a couple as well. So it's it's all happening in the front there. Leah Tuala tries to uh, get a wobbly one there, but that's well taken by Leslie above it's a his great head. Take. And, uh, it certainly was a wobbly boot. And, uh, Walker sets himself up to clear here. Robinson comes forward to take it under a little bit of pressure and a good tackle by Will Calder. Robinson's equal to the task, and that's been turned over, however. But we're going to see a penalty against West Scarborough for going off their feet. If we watch the replay here, so Robinson gets back to his feet, gets tackled again, and then... Yeah, the West Scarborough Jacklers. Just falling over there. Almost being driven over by their support yeah. players, weren't they? And unable to uh, show Kyle Burnett, the referee, that they were holding their own weight. And we go to a Cottesloe lawn out. And it's just tapped off the top. Hunt gets it. Plays it out of the back, but to nobody. And uh, it's Robinson who has to pick it up, and he puts it straight to the boot. Bit of a nothing kick here, but Calder's found himself in some space. And to Penny Ooh. Grace, is, uh, he's done the worm burner. And Wapiri has taken that ball, and Jonah Placid's out of position. Wapiri's been able to hand it back inside to Faulkner. He's a little fumble, but he's gathered it. Wapiri. Right. Cottesloe in attack now, coming, looking to come back to the short side. Hunt in there on his hands and knees, trying to get the ball back. Leah Tuala, Kuribaki plays. Jonah Placid intercepting, tapping it up. Offloading there, and they're uh, back in attack. And uh, Mio trying to offload. Meredith has picked it up. He's put it on the boot. There's action aplenty here. Tapini Grace at, at the back is hit, and he's under pressure. And he's Faulkner's on top of that. And uh, that looks like it'll be a very easy decision for Cole Burnett. Yeah, that's as, uh, it's as clear as they come with, uh, with both Hancock and Faulkner. Over yeah. to Peeny Grace. 
And they go quickly, quite as low, but it's has. about 27,000 metres from the mark. <laughs> Good enterprise by Hunt. And directly behind Burnett. I mean, you've got to make sure the referee's looking at you when you do that. Hancock had it in his hands there for a second. I thought he was going to take another quick tap. <laughs> and quite excited for that one. He, he wants his hat trick. Is that Meredith just chips it. Little 9 iron into the corner. And West, West Scarborough under pressure now. And, uh, Cottesloe forwards just aw dawdling into position here, getting themselves set, making the call, making sure the call is correct. And they go to the back. Set up, here, looking to set up the mall, and they do so successfully. Wanting to get the ball out, goes to Hunt. Hunt to Leah Tuala steps off his left, he's staying alive. He's good, some good foot, good balance. He's still going forward. He's almost at the line. They're very close. A difficult man to bring down. He's just got such twinkle Hunt. toes. Hunt plays across the line. Cottesloe very close to scoring here. They go again. Meredith wants the to ball, brings out. it oh, back on the inside. inside. And that is the ball back to Patrick Maka on the inside. He hasn't been on there long, but he's made an impact. A great ball back on the inside. And Cottesloe scoring again. I think, think Maka started that movement from the line. It was a good take, and uh, got it. he's finished with the... With the pull over the line. Great inside ball there by Benny Meredith. And it was good to be. He asked questions of the defence, didn't he? He said, come to me, come to me, and uh, try and leave a little opening on the inside for Marka to uh, make his run and score a very good try, a timely try, and one that just starts to build a bit of pressure. And it, and it, it, uh, it represents some really good momentum for Cottesloe. Ethan uh, Robinson taking a little drink before he places the ball on the tee. Yeah, busy passes of play there, um, building up to that try, um, even before the line out. Um, I think the, the Cottesloe forwards are definitely happy to take a bit of a breather after that one. See, both teams have started to, to use the bench now and um, get some fresh legs out there. It's, uh, it's a pretty warm afternoon, so... There's going to be some weary bodies out there for sure. And it will be interesting to see if the fatigue sets in. And uh, as we see Ford Hemi making his way off the field as Max Bury goes long again. And what we predicted in terms of playing the game in that corner has only really come about from Cottesloe scoring points and uh, West Scarborough making restarts back there. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here for West Scarborough. About 37, 38 metres out from the Cottesloe line. And both, both teams, I feel like, are putting quite a bit of pressure on the outside with their with their rush defence. So the ball hasn't been able to get too far. So they've both kind of got good momentum, keeping it nice and close and tight. Every time they've gone too wide, they've, uh, they've been, been tackled behind the advantage line. And that uh, spits out the back of the mall, and Walker throws a bad ball to Bury's feet. Bury's he breaks through, through the line. He's, He's got, got support, support on the inside. He wants to go himself, and he takes on the on the defensive line and. Max Bury has got some serious wheels as a 10. And he's taken on the Cottesloe defensive line, stretched him on the outside. Well, he looked threatening from the get-go there when he was running towards the line. And it was and well set up in the set piece with the driving more, but it spits out the back, and he's picked that up on the half volley really well. Looks to play to Tinamana, but goes himself. And says to Robinson, mate, I'm taking you on the outside, and you are not going to catch me. And Ethan Robertson just watched him draw away from him. And uh, Max Bury, he's uh, scored that about uh, five metres in from the sideline, but he's run from about 40 metres out on the far side of the field. So it's uh, just, just angled his way across the field. And it's definitely what West Scarborough needed, just to reply to Cottesloe's last try and to keep them on the scoreboard well in the game. Yeah, I was just going to say from the other perspective, Cottesloe will be so frustrated with that. They've just sort of got their nose and noses in front of the good lead and then they've just slackened off and um, and then Scarborough just straight back into the game and uh, and yeah, keeping keeping the home wrestle alive. Beery with this attempt, he struck it nicely, but it looks like it's going to stay left. Just push that just to the left a little and he's not going to get the cookies for that one, but he will get the uh, the try next to his name. Great turn of pace there. A bit of a show and... Uh, 
kept the ball in two hands. And he's looked to 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 use Tinamani on the inside, and it's just given uh, left Robinson with a bit of doubt, and then there's just that's given him an opportunity to take him on the outside. And, and you identify a really good skill there, Pete, by you know a ten who's broken the line, keeping the ball in two hands, asking questions of the fullback, and uh, just creating a little bit of hesitation, and then backing his pace. And boy, he's got some. Yeah, it's good to have a ten with a, good, with, with a bit of pace that he can back. You know, I was unfortunately I wasn't in, in that position too many times. <laughs> I was really looking to get that ball offloaded. <laughs> As Tapini Grace uh, catches it cleanly. He's got a good egg on his eye. He's, uh, I think his left eye is pretty much closed over. He's got knock there, but uh, he's still on the field and able to catch it. And he's taking that into contact. And Walker, box kick. Robinson takes it back. plays Kalis. And uh, Kalis plays it across the field to Wapiri. He breaks the first tackle of Billy Brown. Goes into heavy contact. And Cottesloe are now playing from inside the West Scarborough half. And... Uh, that will be a penalty, and uh, it'll be a good opportunity for Cottesloe to put this ball down into West Scarborough's 22. And uh, almost it's almost like a, a reply combination, if you're talking uh, boxing terms. It's West Scarborough throw a few punches through Max Berry. Cottesloe, through the uh, penalty, able to throw a combination back at them. Talking about Penny Grace, they're getting involved. Both, both fullbacks I've found have been in, been heavily involved in this game today. Both of them getting themselves in good positions and uh, and also you know good attacking positions out wide. So uh, and, and and both of oh, Penny Grace hasn't used used the boot too much. He did a little bit of a grubber earlier on, but um, yeah, both both fullbacks really showing their class here this afternoon. As Cottesloe set for their line out, and it's a key one for them to win here because they want to bring pressure. It's tapped down. Hunt has to go back, and he's dragged into touch. And so it's uh, it's handed over there. West Scarborough now with their opportunity to release the pressure, get out of their own 22. And uh, we notice Alama Tuli, who has come on for Ford Hemi, will throw the line out. As we see uh, Kaiser Reedy making Kaiser. his way onto the field and replacing the double try scorer, Charles Hancock. There he goes. He's had a great game, him and his mullet. And they'll be enjoying talking about that tonight in the bar. And that's one by Cottesloe. So the pressure just uh, turns around and goes back onto West Scarborough. As Cottesloe goes through Kaiser Reedy, bumps off the first tackler, goes to oh, ground and plays. Legs. For Sawala on the second carrier. He's got a bit of footwork there. Great movement. Hunt looking to get that ball as quick as he can. Meredith looks the shape to pass but goes himself, gets caught in the contact. It's a slow tackle that goes to ground. Hunt scoots, goes himself, looking for an opportunity. Gets closed down though, and the uh, Cotters low forwards now picking and driving, wanting to do it themselves. Goes back to Hunt. He'll play to Wapiri. Wapiri working off his wing, getting involved. Cottesloe got advantage here, so they have to have another throw at the dice. Phoenix Hunter, big pass out wide there to Kalis. Can he sneak Kalis in the corner? Is... He's right there. And that and is a try to Ethan Kalis. He's done exceptionally well to win the contact on the first tackle and watch the second tackler have no effect on him scoring the try. It's a great long ball there by Phoenix Hunt. And you're, you're sort of thinking, what are they going to do here? They're going to go through the hands, but he's thrown it right to the edge. He's done well to stay in play there. And uh, Billy Brown has had uh, no effect on stopping Kalis from scoring there. And they return score. So it's just yeah, back thought, and I forth now. Bit, I thought he had a bit more work to do there, um, Kalis, but he was right on the line there. And it was a good finish, staying in, in play. And um, yeah, quite as they strike back immediately. So we've seen, you know, after that very much an arm wrestle in the first half, a bit of a sorting out period early in the second half, the last 15, 20 minutes has just seen score after score. And as we see, we probably as we see some of these bigger forwards start to tire, will we see more of this? Will we see more play? He's tried, uh, he's tried to force that over Robinson from that far side. But to no avail. So Cottesloe just controlling the game at the moment, keeping themselves 10 points ahead. So it's got to be two scores at least by West Scarborough. 
And they go long through Bury's drop kick. And uh, that's unfortunate. And they don't want to... Lear Tuala doesn't want to muck around too much. And there you go. A little error gives West Scarborough the opportunity. And it'll be interesting if they can uh, to see if they can take advantage of this. Just a little lapse in concentration there. This is where... This is what I spoke of, the frustration from the previous trial where Cottesloe got up and then just let Scarborough bounce straight back and they've done the same thing again here. So they'll be really kicking themselves, put themselves in this, this, uh, in this position. And uh, from a West Scarborough point of view, as a back, you'd be just wanting to make a quick mention to the forwards, win this ball well, boys, win this ball well, because it's a fantastic attacking position for West Scarborough. They've got a nice short side to work with. Cottesloe under pressure to defend both sides of the scrum here. Good scrum here by Cottesloe, putting a bit of pressure on. They've got Kaiser Ready on. Hunt can't oh, do that. He, he must it. have thought the ball was out, but uh, he's probably going to do himself an injustice here. There's a little bit of a push and a shove and uh, work out where they're going for dinner afterwards this, uh, this evening. <laughs> and uh, Phoenix Hunt, I don't know what he was thinking there. We'll see, uh, see through the replay here. He had to have thought that the ball was out. Yeah, he got a bit excited. I think he, saw, he thought um, Cottesloe had the upper hand on the scrum and a bit of a bobble on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Was a bit too eager there. Definitely can't get into that position. So West Scarborough, West Scarborough call for the scrum. Yeah, yeah, I thought that. But I didn't stepping in. So we'll see, uh, see how we go again. I dare say Phoenix Hunt won't be so enthusiastic this time. Beery's positioned himself straight behind the scrum here, so he can look to go both ways. Um, turn him on on the short open side with Jonah Placid. And uh, yeah, you've, got to, you've got to see that. Well, they've, got, they've got some good options there. Yeah. You kind of feel they'd go with the, the wheel of the scrum. I'd like to think and not a pre-call. Yeah, def <laughs> definitely see how the scrum fares because ultimately you'd want uh, that want the right side to come up and open up that right side. Oh, and uh, Lork has gone to go, but he's knocked it backwards. It's so they are on. still alive. It's play on. And the West Scarborough forwards would have been disappointed to look up and see that they've got to come back around and Billy Brown is the one who picks it up, trucks it forward. And they will continue to truck it forward, I dare say, the West Scarborough forwards. Willing to do the hard yards. Just generate a little bit of go forward, suck in some defenders. Vudavarada goes on the far side but ends up on the near side of the ruck. We come back to Bury now, and they go to Placid. Placid, oh, oh beats on the outside. Tapini Grace has opened up, oh. and he will stroll through. And Jonah Placid stepped off his left foot, won the contact, has swung himself around, offload with his right hand to Tapini Grace, running a great line off him. There's that great fan which opened up the space for Placid to offload. And Tapini Grace, he slipped through. I dare say, struggling with... Look, look at his eyes. He's struggling He's to see out of that. But he didn't have any problem taking that ball there. And um, a fantastic, fantastic try. And courage to stay on the field, basically, with one eye. <laughs> so there we go, a return. Great little shift of the, of the pass there by, by Jonah Placid. Just... Um, just wrong footing the opposition there and getting into a bit of a half gap and awfully getting the, hand, the hands free. It was pretty textbook stuff there by him. And um, yeah, to Penny Gase, just found like quite as they were just all corner flagging. Too many of them corner flagging. When to Penny stepped on the inside, it was um, a little too easy. And Bury has successfully kicked this. So 35 32, the scoreboard is just seesawing. And uh, it potentially could come down to who who is willing to take their opportunity in the last eight or so minutes of this game and, and who will uh, will be able to play the basics required just to play field position not make an error that gives the opposition an opportunity to score so Lear Tuala Errors, I think you're right, I think it's going to come down to errors here now Mio takes the ball and carries it forward very very hard and, uh, it's become a wrestle in that tackle Walker looks to play. The West Scarborough forwards. They're Some putting their hands up to now. carry now and do the hard yards. And they will receive the benefit of the penalty there. Cole Burnett with the arm up. 
16. I think it was Fugasa Nuku there finding himself on the wrong side of the tackle. And um, we spoke about in that first half, just um, West Scarborough just really getting over that right quite nice and cleanly. It's just trapped him and... Um, yeah. Another, no another one of those situations. There. Trapped in there, you've got to take it on the chin. And West Scarborough trying to steal back the momentum. Give themselves the opportunity to take the lead. As we, uh, we see the replacements coming on, we'll make sure we try and get all of those for you. But it's Tooley for West Scarborough set to throw the ball in. And it's won by Cottesloe, tapped down, but it's tapped down and gone out. So West Scarborough have just made themselves an extra five metres there. Made themselves a couple of metres there. But they've <laughs> definitely got to get the line out right. They've got to get their set piece right here so that they can give their backs an opportunity to play yeah. from it or set up that driving set more. Set up that driving more, hey. They go again, and it is Leslie they want to go to. They don't get the lift, but they get the benefit of a knock-on from Cottesloe. They won't get the ball, but they'll get the ball. And they play to Norris. Shows, and he goes, and he gets a little bit of a shoulder through. And it is. It's the West Scarborough forwards. They're definitely putting their hand up to carry and to get the go forward. And a tip on there. Looked to be intercepted, but not so. And it's just called a, a knock on. Kuria Barkey looked for the opportunity. He must have heard the tip on call. <laughs> and he almost had it in his hand. He sort of snatched in the end. And, uh, Scarborough find themselves so we, in a great attacking position here now with a middle scrum. And, uh, That's really coming down to the wire here. Definitely. And, and, and if you're West Scarborough, you want to be in this part of the field, but you'd prefer just to be able to score and get the points on the board, potentially take the lead. But uh, more scrums, takes up more time. And they could just be, uh, just could be looking to, to get the final score and get themselves, sneak their way into the lead and steal their first win of the season and Cottesloe's second in a row. Fury again, looking to go blind. It's a strong scrum by West Scarborough. Not going Being told to use it. Bury's working left, right, back and forward across the back of the scrum. And they play Walker. Tinamana takes the line on, takes Lear Tuala and breaks the first tackle, but he doesn't get through the tackle of the back row. And they, it is, it's the West Scarborough forwards wanting to get the pick and drive going and get the go forward. They've been driven back by Cottesloe, and it's a strong defence there, the ruck defence. They take their time, and their call from the sideline is composure, and it is what West Scarborough need right now, just to make sure that they don't make an error and they continue to build pressure. They pick and they drive. It's Tooley getting driven back by some good, strong defence. Leslie works back to the other some side. Some lazy runners there, but they had the advantage. So um, kind of final are just buying their time, and Cotters have got to be careful here because I think there were a few, few infringements in a row there, and it was the same thing. And it's tapped Wood Verata. Has he wangled his way to the post? The ball spits out the back. The whistle's blown, but it's a oh, knock it's on. It's a knock on for West Scarborough. Swalu there making the uh, joyous call that the pressure has just been released that little bit. And we spoke about the errors. It could be an error that could potentially cost them the opportunity to score there, Pete. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Yeah, Vuta Vata just trying to, trying to sneak in a little quick tap there. And um, he, got, he came very close, but it was a knock-on that came on after that. that um, somebody just got a bit too eager. But uh, on aren't, aren't out of jail here yet. Still a bit of work to be done. And um, the West Scarborough's defence has really been good the second half. It's a uh, case of... Uh, Cotter's like just having to do the basics well here. Scrummage well, good platform. Get a good clearance. Lear to Arla, takes it to the line, goes to the outside. Can't get around Placid. They well, set the ball up. Someone dropped the ball there. Cole Burnett blows yes. the whistle. It is a penalty. And who is that? Who's that? Jonah Placid, that Jonah I think Placid? it was. Just, he got his, he's got his big, big frame over that ball and no one was moving him. And he did well laterally here, just to, just to get in front of Lear Tuala and not let him around. And he has his, uh, just set himself up. It's good timing, excellent timing to get in over the top of Lear Tuala there. And uh, you certainly aren't going to uh, move Jonah Placid's frame these days. No. 
Yeah, it could be a future for him in the front row if he wants it, but uh, yeah, he's, he's definitely, he's, he's got class and he's still got a bit of pace he's, and he's still got the opportunity and the ability to jackal balls as he's just shown there. So they've called for the scrum here and uh, the clock is winding down so you would start to think there hasn't been that much injury time in the second half. So, I mean, it's certainly not going to go as far over as what we did in the first half. And the ball just sitting there. Both scrums, good contest here. Being controlled at the back. Scott Scott holding. It's going out the back. It's Mio. He's driven forward. Isaac Mio gets the ball back. Walker doesn't know whether he wants to go over it or pick it up. It's picked and driven. They must be inches from the line, West Scarborough. And uh, they cannot panic here. And it's definitely their forwards who are going to be wanting to score this try. Lining themselves up. It is a mess in there at the breakdown. Point back. Bury. Chip kick to the edge. It's under the bounce. Will Calder, and they have snuck it to the open side. Max Bury has just punt kicked it to the far side. Will Calder sneaking up the sideline. The bounce has popped up for him. Easy as you please. Dotted the ball down over the line. Phoenix Hunt. He had to be 25, 30 metres in from the sideline. Max Bury has seen the space, or whether the call has come from Will Calder, but it's been a cracker of a call. And Wes Scarborough sneaking a very classy try, you would say, because Max Bury had that ball on a string. Oh, it was beautiful. Great little cross kick there. You've got, to, you've got to say, he's got to be. He's happy with the bounce there as well. I would have thought that, you know, but there was so it was acres of space out there. Phoenix Hunt was the last man in, and you say he was like 20 metres from the sideline. He was, he was burning it back, but he didn't get there in time, and uh, oh, Calder couldn't be happier with that bounce, just straight into the basket. And you would say potentially that uh, Max Bury will take the entire time to kick this conversion, and uh, we will keep an eye on Kyle Burnett because we will wonder whether this is game over. It has gone high. Nice and that has gone over, and that has uh, secured the win for West Scarborough. 39 points to 35 over Cottesloe. They will enjoy that victory. And for Jeremy Thrush, it'll be a big relief because Cottesloe there for a little bit looked like they might have had control of the game. But West Scarborough, geez, they showed some courage to come back Absolutely. and just steal that win away. And it's their first W for the season. They've been, they've been really digging deep. You kind of... You could feel it in there that they really wanted it, and um, and, uh, and and it showed towards the end there. And it came down to mistakes, and uh, and, and they were they made the, the, they made fewer mistakes towards the end, and uh, those, those forwards worked really hard. They deserved it. And and, and it, it is a, a sign of the West Scarborough uh, teams of of the last few years where their forwards have been willing to put their hand up and do the work. Uh, but now they've just added they've added a bit of class there in Max Bury at 10, haven't they? Yeah, Max Bury was definitely a standout there today. Um, controlled things very nicely in that boot of his work beautifully. Um, and it was the boot that did it in the end, wasn't it? <laughs> it, it, it certainly was. And uh, it, we, we spoke about the kicking game of both teams uh, having an impact on the game. But we didn't realise it would be a beautiful little punt kick across the field for Will Corder to score that would be the difference uh, between the two teams. And... We, we spoke about it being an arm wrestle in the first half, and it ended up very much being that in the second half, even though Cottesloe looked like the, you know, they scored a few good tries, but they just couldn't get the scoreboard to look that healthy for them. Yeah, it opened up quite nicely, so it was going back and forth, and um, it was actually a beautiful game to watch, and uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of tries in it, so it was exciting, good to watch, and um, yeah, Cottesloe just sort of stuck their noses in front and then just couldn't keep the lead. West Scarborough just bounced back immediately and kept themselves in it, and... Um, and just enough to be able to get that last little strike towards the end and uh, and put their noses in front when it really counts. And so what do you think this will do for West Scarborough moving forward, Pete? Will, will it give them enough confidence to say we're heading in the right, right direction or, or will they have to say to themselves, no, 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 we've got to keep working hard here because we sort of scraped that win out. It could have gone the other way. Yeah, I think, look, they're defending champions, you know, so there's got to be there's, there's that belief that's been in the back in the back of their minds this whole time, and they just they just needed to needed a spark. They just needed something to to ignite that again. And um, and oh man, a good uh, last minute win uh, down at Cottesloe at Harvey Field. 
um, on a beautiful day like this is, 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 is a perfect, perfect way to kick that off, I'd, I'd say. And, and definitely, you, you would take that uh, any, any day, you know, and West Scarborough certainly will. Um, and um, what, what we're going to do here is we, uh, we've, we've called uh, Kyle Burnett over to uh, the sideline and um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll sort of, we'll, we'll, we'll leave him out there uh, and interview him because it was Kyle's 150th match and uh, we'll, uh, we'll just have a quick chat to Kyle and um, see if we can drag him over to yeah, where we are. Awesome. And yeah. Congratulations, mate, on yeah. the game. And, uh, we, we've got him. Well, we've got him some ears, and uh, so Cole, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll catch you straight after the game. And, and it was a bit of a seesawing game. So how did how did you feel being out there in amongst all that? Oh, I joined at the end of the day. It's just a, um, it's another game of footy, really. Um, prepare for it just like any other game. Um, probably have a couple of a uh, couple of years now. Enjoy it, but uh, during the game, it's a uh, good game of footy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, what was it that started got you into refereeing in the first place? Um, Next player, so I played since my junior years. Um, when I moved to Australia, I, um, body was getting a bit too, a bit too sore every morning, getting up after a game of footy. So I um, thought I'd move on to refereeing, um, see, see I could get back to the game really. So I um, started out doing that and enjoyed it. And uh, 150 games later, here I am. And in the process of going through those 150 games, did you re rely on the fact that you had played the game to understand what the players were trying to do? Or was it more about understanding how to actually referee? Look, I think at the start of it, you're relying on your playing days, so you're relying on a lot of instinct and what players are trying to achieve. Um, and then just the more experience you get, you get the, the finer details of refereeing and uh, when to penalise, not when to penalise, what players want to achieve and when, they, um, when they're looking to, to re get reward for it, I suppose. Um, so it's a bit of fine tuning, I suppose, as you, as you move through the, the progression. And do, you, and do you find over the 150 games, how, like how, many, how many sort of years has it been? Uh, looking back the, during the week, so it started uh, Premier debuts in 2014. So nine years of, uh, of Premier Grade now. And, uh, and so you would have seen a fair few faces come and go, but there would be some pretty, uh, pretty good consistency there. Have you built up a bit of a relationship with a lot of those players who've yeah, been there for that time? So I think that's one of the advantages of being around for so long. Um, you have those advantages, you have those relationships, uh, but you have that advantage in the relationships. Um, and it makes the job somewhat easier in some circumstances, um, but often it gives, uh, it can have, lead to difficult conversations when you uh, need to be honest with yourself and, uh, and the players as well. And uh, so uh, you, you, you look fit, you look like you're enjoying it still, how many more games you got in you? <laughs> That's the question. Um, yeah, still, still feeling good, but uh, the body is, it's taking its toll now, it's getting harder to get up in the morning, like, much like it did uh, playing, so uh, we'll see how this season goes. But. Um, Look, there's always referee coaching, I think, and we've got a, a lot of young junior referees or uh, younger uh, referees coming through, not necessarily junior referees, but younger referees coming through who, um, who are probably ready to take the next step now. So moving out the way and giving the opportunity to, to, to referee um, at the higher level, um, I think it's probably the next step for me. Nice. And then I'm um, helping them in their careers. Oh, excellent. And, and it's fantastic that you continue, continue to give back in that way. So congratulations, mate. We really appreciate the, you know, what the referees do for, for rugby in, uh, in, in WA and, and especially you with 150 games. So awesome. enjoy those beers. Will do. Thank you Cheers. very much. Thanks very much. And uh, that, uh, that pretty much wraps it up here at Harvey Field. Thank you. As we have uh, West Scarborough running out victors. 39 points to 35 over Cottesloe. Don't forget Stan's coverage of the Western Force Highlanders match this evening. Kicking off at 5.35. Make sure you tune in for that. But on behalf of everybody here, the crew, myself and Peter Grant, Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time for Fortescue Premier Grade Rugby.
love the game. Do you want the best seat in the house? Help make the game better. Get involved. Become a referee.